Have you ever been so in love with a scene from a book that it made you think, well, that would make a perfect painting? If you have ever experienced this, you shared a feeling with numerous prestigious painters. But while we can only speak about books we love, painters can depict what they feel. Therefore, they express their admiration through artworks where literature meets painting. Since antiquity, literature in all its genres have inspired painters to pick up the brush and retell a story with lines and colors. Greek and Roman mythology, the Bible and other holy books were the most widespread sources of references for painters. European churches and cathedrals are a living statement of how much biblical stories have influenced painting and art in general, and still do. Most of the time, painters depicted the fatalism and the duality of humankind which transcend any notion of space and time and therefore are relevant even in modern times. However, mythology and holy books were not the only source of literary inspiration for paintings. Poems have also been a genre that sparked great works in the history of figurative arts. Dante's Inferno from the Divine Comedy, an epic poem that tells the journey of Dante through hell purgatory and paradise, during which he meets his so beloved Beatrice, is a book that inspired many artists. From the original poems, illustrations to later paintings in different styles and techniques, the Divine Comedy is a noteworthy example of a literary masterpiece that inspired many great artistic works. As we know, plays are written to be represented on a stage, but canvas could only be a platform which transfer films and emotions from the written form in a visual one. The great William Shakespeare offered painters and many other artists a varied catalogue of so many different human situations that numerous canvases depict famous scenes from his plays, whether it's a death scene of Polonius, Ophelia, Desdemona, Romeo and Juliet, you name it, or an intriguing dialogue, Hamlet with the great grave digger, Hamlet with the ghost of his father, you can find it painted by someone. Let us see this with one example, De La Croix and Hamlet. De La Croix was a passionate theatre goer at a young age. He first saw the tragedy of Hamlet in, in, in 1827. He was instantly fascinated with the figure of his eponymous character and therefore developed a deep admiration for Shakespeare's plays. In this painting, we see Hamlet standing just a moment before the funeral procession of Ophelia, next to a freshly dug grave where his wife-to-be is supposed to rest after her death by drowning. He talks to the grave digger, who he had seen unearthing the skull of Yorick, his father's jester. He used to play with him and do love his jokes. It makes my stomach turn, Hamlet says as he carries the dead man's skull. He then starts a long burlesque meditation about the vanity of life. He also blames the grave digger for singing in such a solemn occupation. A moment later, he hears the funeral procession approaching. He decides to hide with Horatio, as you see, Lettuce. Ophelia's brother, he finally realizes that his beloved is dead. He then reveals himself and declares his love for her. De La Croix decided to capture the most intriguing dialogue of a tragedy. He depicts the half naked grave digger offering the skull to Hamlet as to announce the always approaching death. He directs both his arm and his eyes towards Hamlet's face so as to show us on whom we are supposed to focus. Hamlet's black robe accidentally suit the nation. However, his a retreating right arm is a sign of his refusal of death. The gloomy landscape and the clouds hiding the blue of the sky intensify the melancholy of the scene. We are in the presence of death on and off the screen.